Welcome in, everybody, to the Clash Bash Part the Mist Fail season, where we have game two of Theo Lowe against Dat Wheezy. We had seen in a prior game that Theo Lowe took game one. Go ahead and check that out if you haven't already. And then now we have a new game where Theo is to switch heroes over to Icelander, their second hero of their choice, and they'll be going against Shiana again since Dat Wheezy does not need to change heroes since they did not win with Shiana. So let's go ahead and see whether or not Shiana can take out the Ice Queen herself and maybe tie up this match. Let's get into it. All right, here we are. Theo Lowe versus Dat Wheezy. We saw that Theo had won that first game. Shiana's going to go ahead and start us off this time around. Now, Icelander, again, this is a lot of arcane coming in, and it looks like only two AB over on Shiana's end. This is going to be a little bit more rough, I would imagine. Icelander does start with less life, and unfortunately, Shiana also starts with less life due to that fact, if I, if I can recall correctly. But it ends up being that it's going to be first one to kind of lose out to AB, right? Because Icelander can pressure a lot. And with only AB2, these Aether Ice Veins are going to be really, really, really detrimental to the game plan of Icelander. Because ripping a card from Shiana's hand means that Shiana's not going to be able to play those big attacks that she ends up having in this deck. Uh, you know, Dat Weezy's running a very go tall Shiana build with a lot of really powerful Guardian specializations and even some Arcane specializations just in case. But. The good news is that Icelander also has really, really go tall abilities with things like Wounded Bull and Findall's Fighting Spirit. Now, Findall's Fighting Spirit, unfortunately, they're both at 18 life, so Findall's Fighting Spirit does not actually get Icelander a life here, but she still ends up dealing first blood, which is really, really good, and then it's probably just going to be a comfortable put this in Arsenal. The good news here is that Icelander does have... Uh, you know, Theo does have the information of the same Shiana game from last time. So they're kind of familiar with the deck and its strategies here. But here comes a flail of agony for one. Now, this is going to cost one life for Shiana. So very interesting tech here. But the up the ante being played on the flail, which is just an interesting thing because there's a lot of D reacts in Icelander's deck especially knowing that you're going kind of against a Gotal Guardian. And that just ends up being a big win for Icelander. You know, extra resources and extra damage on their abilities. It's definitely a more beneficial thing for Icelander to get those. And, you know, we, we've seen some clash mishaps happening as far as who's got the better, uh, you know, power level on top of their deck. But here comes an Aether Ice Vein. I did not believe it got fused, so I don't think there is a, a, a need for anything there. But uh, luckily, it's still just some additional damage that we're going to go check out. Looks like we're just waiting on the pitch for the AB there. There we go. So Waning Moon's going to come in with another additional damage. AB2 is kind of rough again into this matchup just because you're going to at least want AB3 to block out a good portion of stuff. Uh, you probably Shiana probably could have gone for a little bit more of an AB build here, but you also want to make sure to be able to comfortably block out those big attacks from uh, from Icelander because Icelander is going to still have those wounded bulls, like I said. But right now, the life is more so in favor for Icelander. So those cards, while they're still going to be powerful attacks, they are nowhere near as powerful because her life total is not less than her opponent. So an alluring indictment inducement comes in, alluring inducement. And this, I, I don't see this get played that often. Obviously, it's just a Shiana specialization. So you pretty much just get to have cards become chosen cards. So this one's just going to come in for two damage. And they're going to pummel it. So that's pretty crazy. All right, so a we'll pummel on an alluring inducement. But luckily, there is the fate for scene. You know, you got to run those D reacts into these big attack heavy builds. Uh, outside of that, you'd probably run less defense reactions. But looks like Icelander just got every answer for Shiana here. So they're going to come in with more here. This is a fused Aether Ice Vein. This one's coming in for just four arcane damage. But again, with only AB2, 
you can't really block out Aether Ice Vein. So you're probably pitching for Ice Vein, and then you're going to have to discard or pitch again. So they end up discarding a Sink Below. They're not going to need to use that that often against Icelander, so it's good to not have it. And hopefully they can go ahead and just throw a really big attack here. There's a Shakedown. Not the best in this deck, though, right now, simply because not only is they're the, the wonderful instant speed stuff of Icelander being able to deal all this arcane, but putting Frostbites on the board, not a big effect right now. Shakedown is only really activated by the on hit after you've played an attack reaction, and there is no cards left in Chiana's hand and no resources floating, so there's not going to be an attack reaction here. So no need to worry about an on hit. Icelander can comfortably just take six here and then not worry about it. So now you just move right on into Icelander's turn. Looking to set up probably, yeah, there's the Ice Eternal coming in here. Going to go ahead and just put a lot of Frostbites on our opponent's side and then just Arsenal and Ice card here. So three Frostbites. Again, the Shiana is playing a lot more of a, you know, three cost, four cost attack kind of deck. So having all that additional resources that you need to pay to do that is really, really, really rough for her. But life total just keeps draining on Shiana's end. And again, only AB2. So you're not really going to be seeing. It's just going to kind of trickle down and effects are just going to slowly but surely end up, uh, you know, ripping away Shiana's life here. But here comes Heart and Cross Trap. Had to pay three resources to activate this Heart and Cross Trap, which is a feels bad. And then there is the, the another frostbite. So more and more disruption here. Unfortunately, that frostbite is also going to be blocking off the damage they would do on their next attack. Now, Shiana's down at one. This is not looking great. There's an alluring inducement. Pretty much just gets to do nearly nothing. It comes in for two. And then you just kind of move on from there. They definitely are dead to AB here, which is unfortunate for Shiana. So there goes the game. Theo Lowe wins game two of their Clash Bash match. Well, Dadweezy, that was a stomper of a game. Icelander can definitely present a ton of damage through Waning Moons and all the disruption from Frostbites. And when you want to keep your whole hand and still prevent arcane damage, Icelander just really takes it through. So congratulations, Theo. Theo is now moving into our finals for our Clash Bash season. Super excited to see how that turns out. And honestly, I love seeing the Shiana gameplay. And there's so many different ways you can play Shiana that it doesn't just have to be this go tall build. It can be several different ways. She's got access to every specialization in the game. And it really is just like a completely different way to play Flesh and Blood. It almost seems like a joke style of gameplay. But it really is very, very unique because you never know what kind of Shiana you're going up against. So it's good to see, though, that the Icelander Ira combo that both of these heroes have been doing really, really well in Commoner. And it's no coincidence that they're doing really, really well here in Clash as well. The 20 life, the low life format is really, really good for them. They get to just slam out a whole bunch of arcane damage and their opponent has to make sure that they have enough arcane prevention and still be able to prevent it on their next turn as well uh, in order for it to not slowly deteriorate their life. But luckily, we see that these are the cases. Now we're seeing Icelander and Ira in the finals. I'm very excited to see who they go up against and whether or not Theo can go ahead and win against them and take on the championship for the part the Misfail Clash Bash season. So if you guys enjoyed this video and enjoyed these games of Clash Bash, make sure to go ahead and like the video down below. Subscribe to the Clash Hub while you're at it, if you haven't already. And then you can also follow me here at Ashwings TCG, where I cover a bunch of Clash over on my channel, too. As a member of the committee, I like to make sure that I'm also bringing awareness to the game. And let me know down below whether or not you guys have a favorite hero for Clash so far. Maybe you know who's going to take the finals all the way through. Maybe you're just hoping for something completely crazy on the other end of this finals match. Just go ahead and stay tuned here to the Clash Hub and we'll make sure to keep you informed. 
So thank you all so much for watching, and continue having fun in the flesh and blood. And we'll see you all as we continue on in the Part the Mistvale Clash Bash season. Ooh.